The following is a selection from Our State, presented by UNCTV and Our State Magazine. The human imagination has long been sparked by the simple act of looking up at the night sky. Astronomy is one of the first things that humans are known to have done. The shepherds watching the sky and watching stars uh, move about the sky uh, to watch things that in the sky that were unusual to them. With the invention of the telescope, Generations of wonder and speculation became a new science. And the 20th century added a fascinating discovery. Sounds could be heard from space. Giant electronic ears are now another tool astronomers can use to look at the stars and beyond. Nestled in the mountains west of Asheville is a unique place devoted to this branch of science. Sprouting from the forest floor are giant antennas pointed toward the sky. The ridges above bristle with cameras, telescopes, and instruments. The facility was used for years by NASA as a tracking station. We have ignition sequence start. Three, two, all engines running. Most people today have heard signals come through these antennas. Tranquility Base here, the Eagle has landed. Everyone that walked on the moon, uh, all the people in the uh, Apollo program, you know, talked through the antennas. Stand out here in the wonders of the unknown and try to realize there's a fundamental truth to our nature. Man must explore. After the space program wound down, the site was used by the Defense Department as a listening post. At the end of the Cold War, it was closed and scheduled for demolition. That's when Don Klein stepped in to rescue it for science. An area that's away from the uh, cities, it's uh, a natural bowl in the area that you're looking at here with surrounding mountains to give it a location that's very quiet, a very dark site. That makes it ideal for both radio and optical astronomy, and Don's vision was to make it available to almost anyone. It finally took an act of Congress to help create a not-for-profit foundation, the Pisgah Astronomical Research Institute. But like everyone else, we'll just call it Perry. With just a few employees, but hundreds of volunteers, Perry works with schools and universities to give their students what no single institution could afford to do by itself, hands-on access to the complex tools of astronomy. What that means in terms of education, especially graduate education, is that uh, generations of radio astronomy uh, graduate students are very well trained in terms of software. But it's hard to get them the proper experience in terms of hardware, in terms of actually struggling with an instrument to make it work, finding out what's wrong with that. That's where I think Perry has its opportunities. Students from pre-college to postgraduate come to Perry for intensive workshops. This class is from the Duke TIP program. It's like you plan for months for your observation session. And when it happens, every second is important. They come through the front door, they have to set their books aside. Because once they come through that door, they have to start using everything they learned. You know, there's no more solve this problem in a book and look in the back for the answer. In fact, I had a student, he said, there's not even a book. I said, that's it. <laughs> I knew we hit, we hit the nail on the head with, with him after he left. You're the astronomer, I'm no longer the astronomer. In the first day or two, they're kind of you know, not quite sure of what astronomy is all about. Pretty soon, about the third day, you can you can walk through the, the area that they're in. They'll say something like, you know, we're doing astronomy. And everyone says, yeah, it's daytime. And it's cloudy out. So we're doing radio astronomy in the daytime. We're looking at the Crab Nebula, so we're going to determine its velocity and the mass of the gas cloud surrounding it so that we can figure out the kinetic energy of the entire system. 
here I think the students are challenged because they see science in, a, in its real nature. You have to troubleshoot, you have to think critically, and this institution and TIP programs really challenge students to do that. We don't have astronomy in class, so we've done small lab experiments, but nothing like this, so this is really cool to stretch it in a different direction. After two weeks, I think either you're going to be excited about science or you're going to decide that it's not for you. And I think that's a very valuable experience for the students. Getting students excited about science often starts first with getting the teachers interested. And Perry does that with summer teacher workshops. The dish called Smiley is a central part of that program. They learn how to point the dish. They learn what the radio signals mean different ways that radio emission is produced in space. Smiley's name dates from the Cold War era of spy satellites, when it became kind of a friendly wave to Russian cameras orbiting overhead. Now Smiley's job is to help find the basic building blocks of the universe. They'll point the dish, say, at a supernova remnant. The star had exploded thousands of years ago, and gas is being pushed out away from the remains of the star. Teachers will look at that and they'll be able to see the signature from 1420 of that explosion. And they'll be able to measure how fast that gas is moving towards us or away from us. That's, that's pretty close. That's close to where it was. Okay. It was 3.7 right here. So when teachers come here to Perry, they're actually taught to be scientists. I think that's the real strength of Perry. They're able to bring people in here, show them the equipment, get them excited, just like students are excited when they first come in here. Then hopefully that excitement is translated into your classroom. So how does one see using radio waves? Radio waves are so weak, what the radio antennas do is they measure the voltage of the sky. We're using the reflective dish to focus all that light to a point. It operates like any other telescope, light comes down and comes to a focus. At the focus, at that box at the top is a receiver. So you can think of a radio telescope as a one pixel camera and basically raster your one pixel around the object to make the image itself. Perry is also a pioneer in a new technology that is changing astronomy, remote observing, which means that use of the instruments does not stop at the end of the workshops. They get a username and password. They go back to their schools and they can, they can control that dish as though they're sitting here. They can run through different labs that meet science curricula standards that are just a lot of fun to do. Besides radio astronomy, Perry has branched out to include extensive abilities with optical telescopes. Here too, the new techniques of remote observing offer fresh possibilities. We've uh, created a telescope that can be run by remote control, remote, run over the internet, and you can use it to image uh, the sky from the comfort of your computer room at home. We can pick an object that we want to uh, image, we can click on it, and then we can automatically slew the telescope to point in that direction. There we go. Oh, that's so awesome. So that's the ring nebula. In eight billion years, this is what the sun will look like. Many astronomers resist remote observing because among scientists, we're really, we're really romantics. We like going to that observatory, climbing up on the mountain, making the pilgrimage, so to speak. But the truth of the matter is, with fast, uh, real-time data connections, it's not necessary to be there. Which means that I can be sitting at home with my laptop, and I can connect to Perry, and I can observe that way. So um, this is you know, state-of-the-art observation in astronomy, and this is, this is how everything is going to be within 10 years. 30,000 school children of all grades have crawled inside Perry's portable planetarium called Star Lab. It brings the night sky right into their school gym or auditorium. Okay, now that we're inside, we're going to use the inside of the dome to project the night sky. Dr. Bob Hayward gives a demonstration of how to spot the stars to be seen at the current season of the year. And the brightest stars are up there in Orion the Hunter. The three most noticeable are those in his belt. Then we can use Orion to find some other constellations. For example, we follow the at Perry, science comes out of the classroom and into the realm of the imagination. 
Who can say which one of these inquiring minds might answer one of the unanswered questions of our age? The biggest question of all is, you know, how did the universe begin? And radio astronomy is actually one of the few windows we have in the electromagnetic spectrum to actually answer that question.